Children, grab your pillow, and parents, grab your lighter. Make yourself real cozy, because we're pulling in a lighter. It's a podcast about the fairy tales you've heard many, many times. This time will be different, because we're stoned out of our minds. So spark up a bowl, and tuck yourselves in. Once Upon a Dime is about to begin. We're going to tell you the story of the goblin and the woman. And you know about the goblin, right? Well, let me tell you about the woman. And the woman is really, really super smart because she knows how to read and she writes poems and she can understand them. Yeah, she's a... Not she's well read. She reads a lot, so she mm-hmm. gets a lot of knowledge. Mm-hmm. She's got a lot of things to reflect on. And she's married to a gardener. She could have been a parson or at least married to a parson. So a parson is somebody that like handles like church stuff. She's so smart that she could be a member of the clergy. Yeah. But she's married to a gardener. And you know, the gardener does yeah. what gardeners do. One day she's talking to her nephew, who's the assistant schoolmaster, and his name is Mr. Kisserup, but you don't really need to know that. She was inspired suddenly (laughs) to write a poem uh, about the earth and how beautiful it is in its Sunday gown. It's one of her best pieces, um, but she had trouble with rhyme, um, but she would call it clinchings. They were at the house because he lives with her. And she showed him the, the poem. And he's reading it, and he was like, he loved it. He thought it was awesome. And he was like, wow, you really have soul. And her husband was in the room, too. And he's like, Nonsense! <laughs> you be quiet. <laughs> Shut up now! Don't you give her any any of that good ideas over there. You're making her you're making her think things. A wife should only have a body, but a, a good body. Go ahead. And she's gotta make sure my food don't burn. <laughs> she's adorable. She's like, oh, honey, you're so silly. She's like, oh, I can I can take the burn taste out with charcoal, just like I can take the burn out of you with a kiss. And she was like, you act like all you care about are potatoes and food. But you care about your flowers too. Sorry. And then he's like, tend to the pot, and leaves to go tend to his garden. Which is his his own pot that he's going to mind. Um, so she sits and she has more conversations with, mm-hmm. with her nephew. She likes that she can finally talk about this passion that she has. And he takes that uh, her poem and he uses it for his sermon. Like how beautiful the earth is and how we're the lords of the earth. And some come in to rule with their mind. Mm-hmm. And some uh, come in to rule with their body. We're this itty bitty ant on this big earth, which is in this big galaxy. Going back to you as the little bitty ant, what's your purpose? Uh-huh. How are you going to contribute to this earth? What's your purpose on earth? So they were having that conversation. But now they changed scenes into the kitchen. There's a goblin in the kitchen, okay. and he is minding the pot. There's a cat in there as well. He's a, bl- he's a big, fat, black cat. And uh, this cat is known by the woman as uh, the cream thief. The goblin's in there tending to this pot because she's not. He's throwing a huge fit. Okay, the reason why he doesn't like her is because she doesn't believe that he exists. Yeah. Even though she's very well educated, mm-hmm. she should know. He, he doesn't care if he, if she hasn't laid her eyes upon him. Mm-hmm. She should know. Because there's a there's a Christmas superstition uh, that on Christmas Eve, there the people would leave out porridge for the goblins, and she wouldn't do that. So she doesn't appreciate this superstition and my people get to eat but i don't because i live here so he's like i'm gonna let her pot boil over and burn and you know what else i'm gonna open this cupboard here where there's this cream and the cat was like drooling over the cream you can you can lick some of it if you don't i will and the cat's like well i'm gonna get blamed for it so i'm gonna eat it So it's like eating the cream, and he was like, you know, what else I'm going to do? He's like, I'm going to go put a hole in Pop's socks. So she has to, she has work to do uh, if she doesn't, you know, waste all her time talking about how elite she is with her book learning. Yeah, he talks about all the stuff he's going to do, and then he's like, and speaking of, last night I was teasing the dog. I was dangling my feet, and and the dog was making a lot of noise and woke him up. Two times. But he couldn't see him even though he... He's wearing his eyeglasses. <laughs> and he sleeps with his eyeglasses. His and spectacles. His eyeglasses the cat is sick. He got a cold even though he wears his fur coat all the, the time. 
because he's a cat and he can't hear very well. So he says, uh, keep a lookout. And, and the goblin's like, you've got the licking sickness. So just lick your heart's content. But make sure you wipe off your whiskers. So she doesn't notice or yeah. whatever. And you do that. I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to listen in on this conversation. Of these elitists. Mm-hmm. These uh, educated fools. And uh, so they're talking. I have this book. I've never shown anyone, especially not a man. So don't laugh at me. She pulls out She pulls out a little green notebook with uh, with, with some ink blotches as she's handing it to him she's like Mm -hmm. so i i kind of write a lot of a lot of sad stuff Uh, i'm kind of like emo when i write but i mean there you know we all kind of have to do that you know this one is like danish he was saying yeah let's do away with the german language and then she tells him She's got like her serious poems and melancholy, yeah. and there's even one comical in there called The Little Goblin. And then she was like, Don't laugh, even though it's funny. And then she told him, I want you to read it out loud so that I can see your reaction. Mr. Kisserup, I love poetry, it haunts me, it jeers me, advises, and commands. That's what I mean by my title, The Little Goblin. <laughs> You know the old peasant superstitions about the goblin who is always playing tricks in the house. I myself am the house, and my poetical feelings are the goblin, the spirit that possesses me. I have written about its power and the strength in the little goblin. She's like, you know the superstitions. So then he starts reading it, and at this point when he starts reading it, the goblin is there to eavesdrop. So he starts reading it, and uh, he, as soon as he hears hears her say the little goblin, he's like his ears perk up. He's like, "Oh, she's talking about me." It's like, what could she write, have written about me? He just is presumptuous that she mm-hmm. that this poem is going to be bad. And then he listens a little bit longer, and then he realizes this story about this goblin is actually a metaphor. But he's taking it literal. After realizing that she was talking about how powerful and strong he was, that's what he thought. She was talking about him. She was actually talking about the metaphor. Um, he, he changed his stripes real, real quick. He was like, he was like oh, she's talking about me. This this story she, this is probably going to be like read all over the place, and people are going to know who I am. Like everybody's going to like I'm going to walk down the street, and like people are going to be like, oh, "There's the goblin. That's the, that's the goblin that she was talking about." He was excited. He wanted the praise. He wanted the recognition for yeah. like existing. So the goblin gets that, and he's elated, and he, he wants to change all the things that he did. I love this woman now. She's she's uh, my friend. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let her cat eat all that cream because uh, that's not right. Stupid cat. And he he's eating and he's enjoying it and he's loving it. And then the goblin takes it away from him. And the cat's like, I was eating that. I was I was finally I was getting the cream. I was finally getting the cream that I've been trying to get. He's just like any guy. Egotistical guy, and this, and this woman, she knew that he was gonna stop me from getting that cream. Or if he heard her say nice things about him, she's a sly woman. If you need more explanation than that, you're gonna have to ask somebody else. But don't ask the woman or the goblin because they're not gonna give you a good answer. And that's the end of the story. Close the chapter on this episode until we meet again. And so the story goes, we turn the page to find the end.